Hello again everyone, hope you're all well. So today's video is all about thin strip jigs. I want to make some inlay banding for the box projects I have coming up soon and for that I need to cut a thin strip of wood. This video was originally going to be about making the first jig but then I decided to make another one on top of that as well. So for the first jig I ripped down this piece of MDF into a 140mm square. Then I moved over to the new Ferrex bandsaw to cut out this piece of 6mm perspex and then I shaped the end of it as well on the bandsaw. And this curve was made by simply drawing around the end of a reel of tape. Then using a sheet of 120 grit sandpaper I smoothed over the edges and refined the curve. And I sanded the perspex over it with 400 grit. Now this step isn't necessary, I just did it to give the perspex a frosted look so that the camera could pick it up a little bit better. So next you need a rounded head bolt. This one is an M8, two washers, a nut and finally a bearing. This little pack of bearings I bought off of Amazon and are actually bearings for skateboard wheels. They do the job though. Then on the curved edge of the perspex I mark the centre for where the bearing will eventually fit and this bearing needs to stick out past the edge of the perspex by about 5mm. Then I can get the hole drilled out and then get everything assembled onto the bolt. A washer goes on first, followed by the bearing, then once inserted into the perspex you can add the other washer and a nut. The nut only needs to be nipped up with a spanner, over tightening may crack the perspex. And then you can check that your piece of wood runs on the bearing smoothly missing the perspex. Then over at the bandsaw I ripped these two small pieces of wood down so that they would take up the shape and fit snug into the track on a table saw. And then I can get the square piece of MDF I cut out squared up on the runner using the rip fence. And then get some super glue down and stick it all into place. After marking out a centre hole on the runner, I use a 12mm force in a bit to counter bore a shadow hole for the T nut to fit into. And then I can drill the rest of the hole out with the 8mm drill bit. Then I can get the T-nut fitted with a few gentle taps with the hammer, checking it sits flush or just below the surface of the runner. Then I can get these two strips fitted either side of the square, making sure they run the opposite direction to the runner and that they are flush with the edge. I checked that the perspex fitted inside the runner and could move back and forth freely before marking two points on the perspex where the centre hole is once the perspex is fully extended and then fully closed. I drilled out these two points and moved over to the scroll saw and cut out the perspex between those two points. Now I can go back out to the table saw and get the jig assembled. The centre bolt I'm using I've cut down so that it bottoms out on the track in the table saw, locking the jig into position. Now I can give this jig its first try. I've set up the rip fence so that the edge of the wood I'm cutting runs alongside of the bearing. 
I made a quick adjustment of the blade height and for a first try this was the thinnest I wanted to go. However I expect if I really wanted to I could get a thinner strip cut. You could also use it instead of a feather board and make larger rips if you wanted. The really good thing about this jig is it will always give you the same width strips if set correctly. You just need to move the fence, the width of the cut piece and the blade each time. But the trouble with that jig is, once a piece of wood that started off that wide is now that wide, when you try and push it through your fingers become dangerously close to the blade. So to overcome that I made this second jig. Again it was make it from what small offcuts I have. So I found another piece of this MDF and over at the table saw I set about ripping it down so I could get the two side pieces cut to the right size. With these cut I was then able to place them either side of the table saw fence and work out what width I'd need to cut the top piece at. You want this jig to sit tight on the fence. Mine was ever so slightly loose so I added this piece of packing tape on the inside to pack it out a bit. Something else I had to take into account was these two bolts that stick up above the top of the rip fence. So I made sure I had enough clearance there. Then I could get some glue on the top piece and clamp up the two sides. Making sure to wipe off the glue squeeze out on the top and inside. Then after countersinking some pilot holes I could get the screws in and get it all fixed together. Then I added this backstop on the side that would be facing the blade and I brad nailed that into position. Now for the handle, I just cut down two offcuts at a 20 degree angle, laminated them together and once they were square of each other I also brad nailed them together. I did some shaping of the handles over at the bench sander and then I sprayed it black and fixed it into position with two screws from underneath. Now I'm not overly happy with this handle, don't really like the look of it, so I'll probably end up 3D printing one to replace it with in the future. Then I realised I'd need something to hold the woodstock down whilst I'm cutting it. So I come up with this little peg. It has a taper at the front and I cut the slot over at the bandsaw. I just fix that into place with a large bolt. I just need an 8mm spanner to tighten the bolt into place. So you don't need to use this slide and fence jig in conjunction with the other jig as you can just use a push stick to hold the wood in place. So for a first try I thought I'd go for a finished rip cut I could achieve which turned out to be just over 2mm. Now I'm quite confident I could rip some thinner strips down if I really wanted to but as this was a first attempt I didn't want to ruin the jig on the first go. So then it was time to just have a play and try it out on some other cuts. So all in all I'm quite happy with these two jigs. To me jigs don't have to look pretty, they just need to work. These two are more than worthy for what I want to be able to make with the inlay banding wise and it would be a lot safer for me to make those small cuts using these jigs. So as always thank you for watching and your continued support. Big shout out to my Patreon supporters for the support they're giving me over there. As you may have guessed, the next video is going to be about wooden inlay banding and the different styles that we can get using different types of wood. 
If you find this video useful, don't forget to give me a like. If it's your first time here, hit subscribe and the bell notification. Drop me a comment below to let me know what you think. And I'll see you all again in the next one.